This is a video review on the Lenovo ThinkPad T440 laptop for use in 2023 and onward. So this T440 features a Intel Core i5-4300U CPU at 1.90 GHz, two cores and four threads. And right now I have eight gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM installed. Now four gigabytes of this is soldered to the motherboard, which you can install a eight gigabyte RAM stick to equal 12 gigabytes. And I'm not too sure about going beyond that as the product specifications only list up to 12 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. In addition to this, I have a Kingston 240 gigabyte a400 solid state drive installed. There's also the option, which we'll discuss later, of an M.2 SSD. As for Wi Fi, we have an Intel dual band wireless AC 7260 Wi Fi card with Bluetooth. Integrated graphics are Intel HD 4400 to line up with the fourth gen Intel CPU. So this version features a 14 inch HD. 1366 by 768 display panel and you can also get a 14 inch 1600 by 900 display panel too which would be a little bit better on to other physical characteristics we have the standard six row spill resistant keyboard uh, chiclet style with the characteristic red touch point and down here we have what is often referred to as the clunk pad for the touchpad. I suppose it's because it clunks a little bit. Um, it's your standard touchpad. I don't mind it. I prefer having the three top buttons up here, especially while using the red track point, just because it favors the uh, average ThinkPad user a little bit more. But otherwise, it'll do. And over here, we have the fingerprint reader, should you choose to use it. Up here we have the power button and this is glass fiber reinforced plastic for the palm rest and the rest of the case. It's actually pretty nice durable material. The top of the laptop features a very characteristic look of this generation of ThinkPads with the Lenovo logo and the ThinkPad logo over here with this little red LED flashing and also indicating whether or not you're indicating whether or not you have the power adapter plugged in. Characteristic to a lot of refurbished laptops that I purchased from government auction, we have an area where there is cl clearly a sticker that stayed there for many years. A lot of this can be cleaned off and it does become less noticeable or less of a distraction over time. The bottom of the laptop chassis features some uh, stylized ventilation for passive cooling and here is our air intake for the CPU fan which will exhaust air out this way. Up here is the three cell external lithium ion battery and there's also an internal there's also an internal three cell lithium ion battery. Uh, right here we have a port for a docking station and there's these three areas for uh, liquid to leak out should you spill on the uh, top of the laptop while it's open. Uh, hopefully it's just water. If you don't desire to use a docking station, you can also buy a little dock hub like the one I have connected to my workstation PC here. Um, this would connect via USB 3.0 and offers up to uh, six more USB 3.0 ports, a microphone input, and uh, DVI and VGA display ports with an adapter. So you can hook up an external monitor. On the left side of the I.O. we have the power adapter input. There's the grill for the air exhaust for the CPU fan. One mini display port which also carries audio. You can connect a HDMI adapter to it if you want to hook it up to a TV or monitor. A USB 3.0 always on so, the, uh, so long as the laptop is powered on you can charge devices like your cell phone. And the optional smart card reader on to the right side, we have the microphone and headphone input, the SIM card reader, optional again, and a 4-in-1 SD card reader, USB 3.0, RJ45 Ethernet port, and a VGA display port, as well as the version of the Kensington lock on the very end. 
So let's take a look inside and all we need to do is remove this back panel to reach where we can upgrade and service the computer. So first we want to remove the external battery. And all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screws. Now to remove the back panel, I usually use something like a plastic guitar pick. It's just something that I have around that won't mark up and scratch the case. All right, so here's our internal battery that you can disconnect from the motherboard right here while you're surfacing. Here's a spot for the 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive bay that's currently holding the Kingston SSD. Right here underneath this piece of plastic, we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 card, as well as the spot where you would install the M.2 SSD or WWAN card right here. And over here is the one DIMM slot for RAM upgrades, and currently we have the 4GB RAM stick installed. It'd be nice to install an 8GB, but that's just what I have in stock at the moment. And you can see right here we have the 4 gigabytes of soldered RAM to the motherboard, which is apparently Samsung as what is printed on the chip. If you wanted to clean up and apply new thermal paste to the CPU, you just have to remove four screws right here that'll release the whole heat pipe assembly and you'd be able to lift up the CPU fan as well and clean that out. I've already done this and I don't really need to demonstrate it, but it is fairly easy to figure out how to do it. Outside of this, there's just various connections that you would have to disconnect should you want to replace things like the display panel, um, power plug, etc. Now as for performance with general use, you'll find that it's pretty snappy as long as you have the SSD installed, a good internet connection and uh, at the very least 8 gigabytes of RAM. Um, you can see that it's very responsive. Uh, the touchpad is actually very intuitive and you'll be able to do things like watch videos. Um, it's very easily used for office work, uh, Office 365, etc. I could easily see using this on a daily basis with my current job uh, without having any problem and having the additional option of multiple displays. It would be something very functional for me. The stock speakers on this laptop are not actually too bad. Now this is packaged into a thermal take. The sound is actually halfway decent and I would be happy enough, uh, but I'm not too picky. If you're looking for an improved audio experience, you could of course link a Bluetooth speaker. Also features a standard 720p webcam. For gaming tests, I have an SSD loaded up with all my Steam games connected via USB 3.0. But for right now, let's go to the Epic Games Store and test out Fortnite. All right, for the best results, we have a window display, 1280 by 720 resolution, and of course, graphics set to performance, lower graphical fidelity. All right, so right now we're averaging around uh, mid 30s to mid 40s frames per second. What I'm looking for is just general playability. We don't obviously aren't going to get the best graphical performance. All right, so this definitely isn't the best playing experience. If you further lower the resolution, you'll probably be able to up the frames per second. And I would say this is playable in a pinch. All right, now for a game that's a little more applicable to this system is Left 4 Dead 2 on Steam. Now this game should perform very well on the system. Right now in the safe room, we're averaging anywhere from mid 50s to high 80s frames per second. Uh, which is quite the range, but let's see what happens when we exit and get a little bit more action on the screen. What I'm aiming for is uh, fluid gameplay. It doesn't have to be really high frames per second. 
um, but right now it's averaging above 60, which is good. And honestly, I couldn't really ask for more. That's going to be enough to play this game from beginning to end and have a good experience and you could still team up with friends and have a pretty good time. Alright, so I pulled up Star Wars Dark Forces just to demonstrate that there is that there is a huge variety of older games and lower quality games that you can play on a laptop like this and still have a lot of fun doing so. So just on my Steam account alone, we have lots of games like Counter-Strike, Half-Life, uh, you can play Portal, lots of games that you can still play on a laptop like this. So in conclusion, would I recommend the T440 for use in 2023 and onward? Yes. Um, especially if you're just looking for something for general use, uh, some light gaming, just getting you from point A to point B for computing. The 2-core 4-thread 4th Gen i5 CPU and the DDR3 memory is still completely fine for 2023, um, especially if you can expand that to 12 gigabytes outside of the 8 gigabytes that I currently have in this video. In my opinion, this would rival new laptops off the shelf or the cheap notebooks that are only really built to last one generation. And if you're not looking for touch capabilities or something on the touch screen, uh, it, again, in my opinion, this would rival any Microsoft Surface. So hopefully this video helped you decide if this laptop is the right choice for you. If it did, let me know in the comments below. If you're currently using one, let me know about your experience or if you feel like I missed something important in this video. So. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.